So what is weight loss surgery? Weight loss surgery is a tool that is designed to help control appetite. It's not a, it's not a miracle, although in many people it does work in a very miraculous way to really, uh, to really change the whole way that they relate to food uh, in terms of having control. But uh, it's not a miracle by itself. It does uh, have to be used properly like any tool. The two tools that we use um, surgically are Roux & Y gastric bypass, uh, which is sometimes called just the Roux & Y or sometimes just gastric bypass. Sometimes it's also called stomach stapling, but as I'll mention in a few moments, there are other procedures that are also called stomach stapling, so uh, that's a little bit too broad of a term to really uh, be specific enough for what we do. And we also do uh, laparoscopic adjustable gastric banding, which is the lap band uh, that uh, is uh, made by uh, Inamed or now Allergan uh, company here in the U.S. There are some other uh, adjustable bands around the world, uh, and we may have some more in the U.S. soon. This is an illustration of the gastric bypass. Uh, let me just a point here. This is uh, the stomach, the body of the stomach here, and this is where the esophagus comes down and uh, normally joins the stomach. This, use, this is a small part of the upper stomach that we divide off, and I want to point out that currently uh, we divide uh, the stomach off, and we've been doing this uh, throughout the um, life of our program, but formerly um, in older gastric bypasses that was not divided, and people who've had gastric bypass many years ago sometimes can have that uh, reestablished connection. If you hear of somebody who had a gastric bypass that, that uh, opened up or grew back or, or uh, had a fistula, you can hear. So we divide that bowel, divide that uh, stomach off and make a little tiny pouch, and then we bring this piece of bowel was down here connected to this. We divide the bowel down here and bring that loop of limb of bowel up and attach it to this small pouch. That is jejunum is the name of that part of bowel. So that's a gastrojejunostomy if you're reading on the web or in a book. Um, and then, since this stomach now comes down to this what was a dead end, uh, we bring that together with the bowel down here, and that's the Y part of the Roux and Y. You can see here that digestive juices that are made in the stomach and the liver and the pancreas here uh, come down and then join food at this point in the Y. And now food that you swallow comes down and it doesn't have any digestive juices uh, to help it uh, uh, be absorbed until it gets to this point in the Y. And that's why we call this a malabsorptive and restrictive approach. That small pouch is a restrictive, uh, uh, obviously you don't have as much room to, to swallow food or to store food, you feel full much, much quicker. Uh, but then it's also partially malabsorptive because those two limbs up above now really are not absorbing much food. It doesn't actually make a whole lot of difference in the number of calories that you absorb. Uh, down below you still absorb most of your calories, but it does make some difference in terms of uh, minerals, uh, vitamins uh, that you absorb. And so you do need to be on a supplemental vitamin for life. The advantage of uh, gastric bypass over other methods uh, currently used First of all, it really is the gold standard uh, in the United States, uh, and uh, it was the gold standard previously in the world, and I think it's actually coming back uh, to, to still be the, the standard. I think there are more bans being done uh, other places in the world for various reasons, but uh, this is still the, the standard even worldwide. It is fast weight loss. Uh, usually in the first six to nine months, people lose uh, most of the weight that they're going to lose. Some of the disadvantages of gastric bypass though, are, it is a, a bigger operation than the lap band, uh, and there are some uh, being bigger operations where we're, we're dividing and sewing bowel more, we're having more things that have to heal, we're in more places in the abdomen to, to reroute these bowels around, um, there, there is a higher risk of things breaking down or not healing properly. So the mortality rate overall, uh, the death rate with this operation, is about 1 in 200. Uh, in centers of excellence, uh, it's about one in 300, but it's, uh, it's along the lines of uh, hip replacement or um, a little bit more than, than gallbladder surgery, uh, but along the lines of any major surgery. Uh, you can have, with gastric bypass malabsorptive problems, usually related to vitamins or minerals. Some, uh, iron or anemia can be a problem for some people uh, who need to be, be on a supplement. Uh, dumping syndrome is a problem that people can get when they when they swallow, especially like a milkshake, a, a food with a high osmolar load, 
and it doesn't have any storage in the stomach anymore. It goes right into the bowel, and the bowel brings fluid into that uh, that lumen, into the inside of the bowel, and, and you feel like you're light on fluid, like you just lost a, uh, you just are almost instantly dehydrated, and that can cause people to sweat, have a fast heart rate, and just feel generally sick. I don't actually call this, it's not really a, a complication or a disadvantage to me, uh, for, and for most patients, they are glad to have that because they generally get dumping with if naughty foods, if you will, things that they probably shouldn't be eating much of anyhow. Uh, a lot of people will tell you they can have a bite or two of ice cream, but if they have a bowl, they will get that dumping, and that reminds them that they shouldn't be probably eating that much ice cream. Uh, possible anemia problems, uh, we'll touch on complications uh, uh, of, of surgery. That certainly can happen. Um, the um, adjustable gastric band is a purely restrictive approach. Uh, the only thing that happens, and this is a, a band right here, this is a, um, the top part of the band uh, that goes around the stomach. You can see here, it forms a very similar pouch to the pouch that we divide off with gastric bypass. However, we don't actually divide any tissue, uh, and we, don't, uh, we do sew a little bit of tissue, but it's not uh, something that would leak for the most part if, it, if it, the stitches were to break down. This tubing comes out and sits under the skin. It's not, it doesn't come outside of you at all. Uh, and there's a little port, this is a reservoir, that sits under the skin that we can access in the clinic with a very small needle, uh, with a little numbing medicine. It's a very easy little procedure to do, easier than an IV, easier probably than a lab drop. Um, and we can either put fluid in to this system, and that inflates a little balloon on the inside of that band. And if you come to the information session, we pass a band around and you can see it in person. Uh, there are also some very good resources on the web uh, that are, uh, we have links on our, on our website for that. Uh, that you can see how that balloon looks. But that balloon, as it increases in size, makes the opening from the pouch into the main stomach smaller. That holds up the uh, emptying of food and makes you feel full much quicker. Uh, both operations are designed basically to make you feel full on a very small amount of food. And that's where we talk about control of appetite. Advantages of this, uh, first of all, the band has been around um, for more than 15 years. It's been approved in the United States now for more than six years. Uh, it does have a lower operative risk. The mortality is about one in 1,000. Um, it is reversible. First of all, you can remove the entire system, but that is still an operation. Uh, it is also, though, reversible uh, in terms of its effect by taking the fluid out of the band for many people. If you need to go on a mission trip to Africa or if, uh, if you need uh, intensive medical treatment for some other reason, uh, or, or with pregnancy, we can, uh, we can back fluid out of the uh, band as well as put it in. Um, there are no malabsorptive problems. Um, you do have a shorter hospital stay. Usually people can go home the same day with the band. Uh, you don't have any dumping issues. And again, for some band people, that can be a little bit of a challenge because it is easy, as you can imagine, to sneak high-calorie liquid foods through that band and you really don't feel full. And, uh, that requires a little more motivation to avoid those foods than with the band. Um, and you generally don't have anemia issues. Uh, it is a longer term weight loss. It usually people uh, are uh, more than a year, many people are even more than two years before they re reach their lowest weight. However, most people are losing weight from almost the very beginning. They just lose a pound or two a week as opposed to uh, uh, several pounds a week that we can see with gastric bypass. Uh, the other disadvantage is that they're um, is less long-term data just because the band has not been around as long and we don't know if there will be issues uh, over time. Other weight loss uh, surgical procedures that have been done and some are still done, vertical banded gastroplasty is uh, the old stomach stapling technique. I don't have an illustration of it here but it did what basically what the adjustable band did in terms of just creating a little pouch with a small outlet but the outlet was not adjustable and the way that the pouch was created uh, everything could open up over time so that the tool essentially was either not there uh, at later uh, years and so people regained weight or for some people with just a single uh, non-adjustable opening they would learn to eat around that and they'd need a little more control or a little more help and uh, while it was very effective weight loss in the short term at the 10 year mark about 40 percent of people had regained their weight uh, there are a lot of people out there who have very successful weight loss with a VBG but certainly with this degree of long-term weight loss, it's not an operation we want to 
uh, be promoting and we don't perform it because we think the lap band has uh, better outcomes, uh, at least in the time horizons that we are aware of currently. Biliopancreatic diversion or duodenal switch is uh, a, a pair of operations that are very similar. Um, they're not exactly the same, but they are very, um, very high um, malabsorptive procedures where you actually are not absorbing all your calories. And that does mean then that calories that, that someone with one of these operations ingest, uh, when they ingest calories, they're actually pooping out some of those calories in the end. They go through your colon. As you can imagine, uh, uh, when you're actually pooping food products out, a lot of people do get diarrhea with this, sometimes six to ten, uh, very loose, foul-smelling stools a day. Um, their gas, and gas doesn't smell great to begin with, uh, uh, but their gas often can smell more like rotting flesh uh, because of that food. Um, but beside the sort of grossness of what can happen with this operation, the malnutrition risk is actually very much higher. Um, and we don't think that for the, for the additional weight loss, there's really much benefit for patients. Um, this really is the most severe operation there is. And I would like to just point out for one moment, there are people who come in who say, this is really what I need. They've read about it on the internet. Uh, and I don't think it's a, an irresponsible operation. It just has more, more cost than the other operations. However, I think a lot of people worry that they are uh, not going to feel full after the other operations. And they read about BPD or, or duodenal switch, and they hear that they can eat as much as they want, and they're not going to have to eat any less. And while that's partially true, uh, I think it's, it's more because they don't believe that the other operations will work for them, that they won't feel a satiety or a feeling of fullness, that they'll feel deprived with the other operations and they won't feel deprived with this. And really that, that's not the case with the lap band and with gastric bypass. You don't feel deprived. You feel like you've had enough food. And I tell people, you know, if you like pizza and, and you can tolerate pizza, and some of those people the band can't tolerate the crust, but the idea is for you to feel full after one piece of pizza or even a half a piece of pizza instead of full after five pieces of pizza. It's not that you can't enjoy food, uh, but I do think sometimes people, people uh, choose this because they're concerned uh, that they're going to feel deprived of the other operations. We don't perform uh, either of these operations here. Now, I do want to stress again um, that no operation is a cure. These are treatments, and they are very effective, uh, and they do work very well with um, motivated patients. I, I'm always a little scared to use the word motivation because everybody, I'm sure, has told you every time you've dieted, if you were just a little more motivated, this is not that level of extreme motivation where you have to be deprived and where you have to summon up uh, a tremendous amount of willpower. It's more the motivation that it requires to uh, use glasses every day or to you know, keep them clean or to keep your car running and remember to, to take care of it like it needs to be taken care of. It doesn't mean you have to become a mechanic. Uh, the same for these. It does not mean you have to become a perfect eating uh, person. You don't have to follow a perfect diet. You don't have to become a perfect athlete. We do uh, recommend, obviously, for long-term success that you eat responsibly and that you do try to be active every day to move your body. Uh, I'll get into that a little bit more. But it's not the it's not as hard as all um, as, 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 as dieting uh, and keeping things off. However, even though it's not a cure, it is a very effective treatment. Very few people fail to lose weight, um, especially with the gastric bypass. There are a few who fail to lose weight with the band. It just it doesn't give them a good signal um, or they just aren't ready to use it. And that does happen rarely, but occasionally. And very few people ever regain all of their weight. Now, we do have some people who regain some. Uh, almost everybody with a gastric bypass will regain a little bit of their weight um, because they lose a little bit of muscle in the first six months of weight loss. And they regain usually 5 to 15 pounds of, of muscle mass. Uh, but very few people regain all of their weight. Um, however, as uh, um, uh, an Australian surgeon says, uh, um, it's not automatic. Americans especially he, he likes to pick on us, uh, says that we really want things to just be fixed. Doc, just, just fix me. I don't want to think about this again. Well, it's really not the case. It's not automatic. You do have to use it. Uh, you do have to wake up every morning and say, well, this is, this is how I live my life, and I'm comfortable with that. I'm glad I did it, and most people are. Um, it's also not risk-free like any operation that we perform. Um, 
and we'll get into the wrist a little bit later here. This is the weight loss curve. This is a graph of uh, what can happen with band and bypass on average uh, and with uh, duodenal switch operation or biliopancreatic diversion. As you can see with the band, uh, the diamonds here, the weight loss happens over two to three years. Certainly most of the weight loss comes in the first year, but uh, there's still substantial weight loss um, in, in the later years as well. I think of this as an advantage in several ways because uh, it does uh, give you more time. It forces you over time to change habits. Uh, if you're only halfway to your goal after eight or nine months, uh, you're more likely to keep up with your walking program, to keep up with support group, to keep up with uh, making good food choices. And, and that reinforces uh, being able to do well for the rest of your life, uh, especially with Minnesota or Wisconsin winters. Uh, finding out uh, plan B or plan C type uh, exercise activities um, and, and practice them over a couple of winters is definitely a good thing. The gastric bypass, as you can see, people lose a lot of weight very quickly and they stabilize at a little less weight loss. Usually they regain just a little bit of weight. To, this on, on average is about 10 pounds um, in years two and three. A lot of times people panic that they're regaining all their weight and uh, that's almost never the case. Now, we have on here for completeness sake the, the duodenal switch operation, bill of pancreatic diversion. You can see there's more weight loss here long term. However, again, as I mentioned, at the cost that we don't believe uh, is really worth it. This for most people is 10 or 15 pounds additional weight loss at most. Um, certainly somebody who's two or 300 pounds overweight may lose 20 or 30 pounds more, but there's not much health benefit in this difference. If you're diabetic or have sleep apnea, uh, your problem <laughs> is usually dealt with by the time you've lost 20 or 30 pounds. Uh, and so we're well into a safe zone with all of these operations and more is not better. Uh, it's, it's attractive, it sounds like uh, a better deal, but um, again, in terms of the risks that go along with that, it's uh, just uh, too costly, we feel, and most of our patients agree. Uh, revisional operations, we do perform here. People who have had uh, older operations, either an old gastric uh, bypass that has broken down, or a vertical banded gastroplasty, or other uh, procedures, we can change a VBG to a gastric bypass. We can uh, add a gastric band to a previous gastric bypass. Some of the old bypasses had a larger gastric pouch and people do get benefit from having a band on that. That's a very individualized issue and I, uh, um, we definitely go into great uh, depth with people who want to have a revisional operation in terms of defining what operation they had, what their current anatomy is, what their expectations are.